Okay, so hi everyone uh, and welcome to Get Ready for the Cloud. Uh, in this talk, I'll present you a number of principles and best practices for migrating projects to cloud based on the experiences that we gathered starting with the pilot phase of AEM as a cloud service in the second half of 2019. My name is Andrea Moise and I'm a senior software engineer in AEM Fluid Experience team and I'm talking right now from Bucharest where I'm based. Uh, I'm with Adobe for more than seven years, and I'm really honored to be for the first time at Dev2. So in the beginning, let's have a quick look at the benefits of AEM as a cloud service. To put it all in one phrase, basically it provides a scalable, secure, and agile technology foundation for experience manager sites and assets, enabling the delivery of impactful experiences at scale. So with AM as a cloud service, the teams can now focus on innovating instead of planning for product upgrades. And now the new product features are tested and delivered with, um, without any interruption. So basically, as you saw mentioned in the keynote, AEM achieves these goals by adopting the main characteristics of a modern cloud service. It's always on, so we'll not experience any downtime for neither the content management nor the content delivery capabilities. It's always at scale because it maintains high performance globally with an architecture designed to auto scale within seconds. And it's always current because AM, uh, AM as a cloud service implements a new continuous delivery pipeline for AM code base with automated updates up to several times a month. And this solves one of the main challenges of AM applications by keeping you current on the most recent version. And it's always learning and evolving because AM as a cloud service evolves on a daily basis based on the project implemented by the customer and the code, the, um, the content and the configurations are constantly reviewed against the best practices. And we provide performance enhancements and security updates. So, if we want to understand this transition process to the cloud service, well, it involves three main phases, the planning, the execution, and the post go live. And for a successful and smooth transition, you should ensure proper planning and adhere to, uh, to the best practices. And this is why I'm here for. So if we start with the planning phase, then we can see it has three key steps involved. The first step in the planning phase is to assess the readiness to move from your existing AEM version of cloud um, of AEM to the cloud service and determine the areas that require refactoring to be compatible with AEM as a cloud service. So you'll need to determine the level of effort expected in this transition journey. And then once you have estimated the level of effort that will be required to move to the cloud service, you should identify the resources, create a team, map out roles and responsibilities for this transition process. And if you didn't establish key performance indicators previously, well, now it's the time to do it. It will help your team focus on what matters the most in this transition process. So, you can accelerate the assessment step by using tools that we provide, like, for example, running the Cloud Readiness Analyzer tool on your current AM version. And if you already have access to Cloud Manager and the Cloud Service environment, well, it's recommended to run your code in a Cloud Manager, in a cloud manager uh, code quality pipeline to assess the required code changes to be compatible with AM as a cloud service. So in order to determine the level of effort expected in this transition journey, as I said, you need to do a comprehensive assessment of your current AEM source code against the changes and the deprecated feature. Because even though AEM as a cloud service brings new features and possi uh, new possibilities for managing your AEM projects, well, there are a number of differences between, let's say, AEM on-prem or um, Adobe managed services as compared to AEM as a cloud service. So let's have a look at uh, what has changed. Well, first of all, apps and libs are immutable at runtime. They can't be modified. Um, then OSGI bundles and settings must be repository based because the web console using previous versions of AEM to change the OSGI settings is not available anymore. Therefore, the changes to OSGI must be introduced via CACD pipeline. And then for the publish side delivery, well, now HTTP acceleration, including CDN and traffic management for author and for published services are provided by default in AM as a cloud service. And it is strongly recommended 
uh, to leverage this built-in CDN. For the asset handling and delivery, well, the asset upload, treatment, download have been optimized in AM as a cloud service to be more efficient, enabling scaling and faster uploads and downloads. So if we look at what's gone, then we see that we can't do changes to published repository anymore. And we don't support custom run modes because some run modes are provided out of the box in AM as a cloud service. Like, for example, the author, uh, the publish, prod, stage, dev, and the combination between them. And additional or custom run modes are not supported. Of course, um, the replication agents were removed. In AM as a cloud service, the content is published now using Sling content distribution pipeline. So the replication agents used in previous versions of AM are not longer available or provided. But here we have some affected areas, like for example, custom workflows that push content to replication agents uh, from replication agents to um, previous servers or uh, customization uh, to replication agents to transform content. And even reverse replication to bring content uh, from publish back to author. And of course, the classic UI has been removed. Classic UI is no longer available in AM as a cloud service. Okay, we talked about uh, the Cloud Readiness Analyzer tool. Well, this tool generates a report that identifies areas of potential refactoring, which is the first step in the transition journey to AM as a cloud service. The Cloud Readiness Analyzer report, basically it's used to gain a high level understanding of general upgrade readiness. The report consists uh, of findings within different categories of issues that have to be addressed before a successful deployment to AM as a cloud service. And some of these categories of issues are, for example, application functionality that has to be refactored or repository items that must be moved now to a supported location, uh, legacy user interface dialogues or components that should be modernized, deployment and configuration issues, and even features that have been replaced by new functionality or that are not longer supported uh, in AM as a cloud service. We also talked about Cloud Manager uh, Code Quality Pipeline. Well, this pipeline uses more sets of rules created based on best practices from AEM engineering in order to validate the customer code. And the first set of rules is formed out of uh, Sonar Cube rules. And some of them are, the, uh, for example, HTTP requests should always have socket and connect timeouts. Or product APIs annotated, for example, with provider type should not be implemented or extended by customers. Also, the resource resolver objects should always be closed. And we should not use Sling servlet paths to register servlets. Code exceptions should be either logged or thrown, but never both. Uh, we shouldn't use also the Sling uh, scheduler, uh, and we shouldn't use AM uh, deprecated APIs. And also, we should really avoid hard coding apps and libs paths. We also have another set of rules used in the code quality pipeline. And this is formed out of oak pal checks. Like for example, um, customer packages should not create or modify nodes under libs. And those... Um, hello, Andrea, sorry to interrupt. We cannot hear you currently. Can you check if your microphone is switched on? We also cannot see you. So I'll start again with the content uh, transfer. So um, we have this phase, which is called content transfer. And for it, we might have two questions. The what, what do we want to transfer and how do we do it? For the what is pretty easy because we really want to take the existing content and the principles from a source AM instance, which could be on-prem or Adobe Many Services to the target AM as a cloud service instance. And for the how, where we do it using Adobe's content transfer tool. And this tool has two phases associated with the content transfer. The first phase, it's called extraction, and it refers to extracting content from the source AEM instance into a temporary area called a migration set. And a migration set is a cloud storage area provided by Adobe to temporarily store the transferred content between the source AEM instance to the cloud service AEM instance. And the second phase, it's called ingestion, and ingestion refers to ingesting the content from the migration set to the target cloud service instance. Um, there are 
four major attributes of a migration set that um, um, should be kept in mind, let's say. Uh, one of them is that a maximum of four migration sets can be created and maintained at a time during the content transfer activity. The other one is that each migration set should have a unique name. And then if a migration set has been inactive for more than 30 days, it will be automatically deleted. And whenever you create a migration set, it's associated with a specific environment. So you can only ingest into an author or a published instance of the same environment. Now, developing and running code in AEM as a cloud service requires a change in the mindset. The code must be resilient, especially um, as an instance might be stopped at any time. And code running in the cloud service must be aware of the fact that it's always running in a cluster. And this means that at any time there are more instances running. And because of this, changes are required to AEM Maven projects to be compatible with AEM as a cloud service. And we need to ensure that uh, they respect the split of mutable and immutable content and that they create non-conflicting and deterministic deployments. Also, they should be packed in a deployable structure. And this diagram here that you see provides an overview of the recommended project structure and package deployment um, artifacts. So you see, we have three areas, the immutable, mutable, and then a container package. And to take them one by one, the UI apps package, or so-called the code package, contains all the code to be deployed and only deploys to apps. And the AM requires a separation of content and code now. And this means a single content package cannot deploy to both apps and mutable areas of the repository. Instead, the application must separate code and content into discrete packages for deployment into AEM. Then we have the UI content package, or so-called the content package, that contains all the content in the configuration. And the content package basically contains everything not in UI apps, in other words, not, in, uh, not under apps or Oak Index uh, nodes. So then we have the all package, the container package, that only includes UI apps and UI content packages as embeds. The old package must not have any content of its own, but rather delegate all the deployment to the repository to its sub packages. Packages, of course, are now including are now included using uh, the file uh, file vault uh, Maven plugin, and we use embeds configuration and not the sub packages configuration. And for complex uh, experience managed deployments, uh, you might want to create multiple UI apps and UI content uh, packages that represent specific sites or tenants in AEM. Okay, so from the planning phase, uh, you should have a list of areas that need to be refactored to be compatible with the cloud service. So now let's talk about the development guidelines for refactoring and optimizing code to move to the cloud service. These guidelines starts, uh, start from the fact that the code running in AEM as a cloud service must be aware, as I said, of the fact that it's running in a cluster. From here, for example, state must not be kept in memory, but persisted in the repository. Otherwise, um, this state might get lost if an instance is stopped. And then, of course, the instance file system should not be used in AM as a cloud service because the disk is inferral and it will be disposed when uh, instances are recycled. Also, for the observation, well, similar with everything that is asynchronously happening, like acting on observation events, it can be guaranteed to be executed uh, locally. Therefore, it should be used with care. For the background tasks, where uh, well, um, code uh, executed as a background task must assume that the instance is running, uh, it's running in, uh, can be brought down at any time. And uh, outgoing HTTP connections uh, should have reasonable connect and read timeout, uh, no classic UI again. Uh, we should also avoid native libraries because code would not be able to download binaries at runtime nor modify them. So for example, um, it won't be able to unpack jar or tar files. Um, for our replication agents, uh, might need to be ported. Uh, and as I said, content is replicated now from author to publish through a pub stub mechanism. So custom replication agents are not supported. And for the logs, or the thread dumps in cloud environments are collected um, on an ongoing basis and they can be downloaded in a self-serve manner at this time. So if you really uh, need to debug, let's say, an issue, you can contact AM support specifying the exact time frame and they will help you with that. 
um, to help accelerate some of the code refactoring tasks, you can use some toolings that we we offer. For example, asset workflow migration that is used to automatically migrate um, asset processing workflows from the on-prem or AMS deployments of AEM to processing profiles and those GI configurations to use with uh, AEM assets as a cloud service. And then we also have the dispatcher converter. That co uh, it converts existing AEM dispatcher configurations to AEM as a cloud service compatible uh, configurations. And we have the sites uh, modernization tools. Uh, they will help you, for example, migrate static templates to editable templates, design configuration to policies, uh, foundation components to core components, and um, also uh, classic UI dialogues to touch UI dialogues. So if we want to talk about uh, the best practices for code deployment and testing, well, you should know that the code quality testing evaluates the quality of your application code. And it is the core objective of a code quality only pipeline. And it's executed immediately following the build step uh, on all non-production and production pipelines. And in code quality testing, basically the code uh, is scanned uh, to ensure that it meets certain quality criteria. And as you saw before, it can be used in the planning phase. Currently, this is implemented by a combination um, of sonar cube and content package level examination rules uh, using OPAL. And there are over 100 rules combining generic Java rules and AEM specific rules. Uh, there's a three-tier um, structure in this code quality testing step uh, for the identified issues. So, for example, we have critical issues. Uh, those are the um, issues that will cause immediately failure of the pipeline. And then we have important issues. Uh, those will cause the pipeline to enter a post state. And a deployment manager or a project manager or a business owner can either override the issues, in which case the pipeline will proceed, or they can accept the issues, in which case the pipeline will fail. And also we have info issues, um, which are provided purely for informational purposes, and they have no impact on the pipeline execution. And you see here on the slides how uh, the result of this step is provided. It's um, provided as ratings, uh, and each rating has a failure uh, threshold. Okay, but we have more um, test steps. Test steps. Um, we can see here uh, we have uh, the product functional testing and uh, basically the product functional tests are a set of stable HTTP integration tests around the core functionality in AM, like for example, authoring or replication. Uh, and they prevent customer changes um, to their application code from being deployed if it breaks the core functionality. And then we have the custom functional uh, testing, uh, which is a step in the pipeline that's always present and will never be skipped. Uh, what you really have to know about this step is that uh, it will uh, be packed as a separate jar file. Uh, the class name of the actual test classes um, must end with IT with capitals. And if no jar is uh, uh, produced, let's say, in the build, uh, the test step passes by default. So as I said, uh, customer written functional tests must be packed as a separate jar file produced by the same Maven build as the artifacts to be deployed to AM. Usually, this would be a separate Maven module in our structure. And the resulting jar file uh, must contain all the required dependencies. And uh, we will be creating it using uh, the Maven assembly plugin uh, that will use the jar with dependencies uh, descriptor. In addition, the jar must have the Cloud Manager test type uh, manifest header uh, set to the integration test value. Uh, right now, it's uh, the only supported uh, header value, but in the future, um, uh, it's planned to add more. OK, and we have one more. This is really interesting. It's called uh, the Content Audit or Experience Audit. And it is a feature available in Cloud Manager production pipelines and only in production pipelines, and it's powered by uh, Google Lighthouse. Uh, it validates basically the deployment process and helps ensure that changes deployed meet baseline standards for uh, performance, accessibility, best practice, uh, best practices, uh, search engine optimization, and progressive web app. And Content Audit in Cloud Manager ensures that the end user digital experience on the site may be maintained at the highest uh, standards. Uh, 
The results uh, are informational and allow the user to see the scores and the change between the current, uh, the current and the previous uh, scores. And this insight is valuable if we want to determine if there's a regression that will be introduced with the current deployment. So if you want to have a look at the content audit results, well, well, we can see that this step provides aggregate and detailed page level test results via the production pipeline execution page. Uh, and aggregate level metrics measure the average score across the pages that were audited for performance, as I said, accessibility, best practices, search engine. But for progressive uh, web app, score is not included in the summary score and will, will be shown uh, only in the page level report details screen. And as you can see in this image, individual page level scores uh, are also available via drill down. So details uh, of the scores are available in order to see what are the results of the individual tests, along with guidance on how to remediate that. And also we have a history of the test results that's per that is persisted in the cloud manager so that customers can see whether changes that are being introduced in the pipeline run include any uh, regressions, let's say, uh, from the previous run. Um, here you can see uh, those details, um, those scores at the page level. So clicking into the details of any, any individual page will provide information on the elements of the page that were evaluated and also the guidance on how to fix issues if opportunities um, uh, are detected. Okay, and now we are at the go live. Well, uh, we have a few best practices for the go live. And first, you need to schedule code and content freeze period. So you make sure the customer won't introduce anything um, in their instance that will not end up on the um, um, AM as a cloud service instance. And then uh, we need to do the uh, final content top up. So we bring everything from the customer instance and we put it on the AM, AM as a uh, cloud service instance. Um, after that, we need to make sure that we complete testing iterations, run performance and security uh, tests to make sure everything works as expected. And then before the cutover, we need to implement a fallback plan to make sure that if the cutover goes wrong or if something uh, after the cutover goes wrong, uh, we can, um, let's say, uh, go back to, to the AMS or the on-prem instance. Usually, this fallback plan is done only for uh, the published year. Okay, so if we make a summary of uh, this presentation, we learned how to plan a migration to cloud service and what's important in the plan phase and how to execute it by doing the content transfer and the code base refactoring. And also how to have a successful go live. And now I know we have a few more minutes. Uh, maybe we have some time for questions and answers. Let me check the board. Uh, okay. So, um, I guess like this. Okay, where can I find the plugins and configurations for SonarCube OakPal if I want to include these rules in my own CI uh, tool chain? Well, we have them in uh, the AM documentation and um, they are part of the cloud manager pipeline. So if you want, if you want to study what are the rules that we apply, then uh, you need to check the AM uh, documentation for AM as a cloud service documentation. And then um, um, the rest is, is just part of cloud manager. All those rules are in cloud manager. Okay. Um, okay, uh, I see a lot of questions for reverse replication. Uh, I think we're out of time right now. Uh, usually custom replication agents are not supported. Uh, I will try uh, to answer these questions, maybe bring them in the panel. Um, let's see, okay. Custom replication agents are not. Um... Are not supported. You can uh, also uh, check um, the forward replication agents that can be adapted if you want to publish to another system. And I guess. 
I should stop the screen share. Okay, I'll try to take the other questions offline. Okay, thank you everyone.